It might seem amazing, but we're still kind of in a golden age for scientific discoveries. That's right, there's still a ton of new stuff out there that we just don't know about yet. Yes, a lot of the time it's admittedly variations of things we already know. Another rocky planet, another tiny beetle species. But every once in a while something comes up which has scientists running for cover and everyone else freaking out. From ancient precision engineering to the children lost in mysterious tunnels, here's the 20 most mysterious discoveries scientists still can't explain. <sighs> Number 20. The Mystery of Puma Punku's Precise Stonework Puma Punku is the name of a large temple complex near Tiwanaku, Bolivia, that's part of the Tiwanaku archaeological site. The temple's origins are unknown, but based on carbon dating of organic material found on the site, archaeologists think the complex was erected by the Tiwanaku Kingdom, which thrived between 300 and 1000 AD, and was one of the most prominent civilizations prior to the Inca Empire. The stonework is the most remarkable aspect of Puma Punku. Puma Punku was terraced earthen mound that was once faced with megalithic stones weighing tens of tons apiece. The red sandstone and andesite stones were precisely cut so they fit exactly inside and locked together without the need of cement. These stone blocks exhibit incredible technical precision and perfection. Even a sharp blade cannot pass between the rocks. Some of these blocks are completed to machine standard with perfectly drilled holes. This is said to have been accomplished by a civilization that didn't have a writing system and was unaware of the existence of the wheel. Something isn't adding up. The stones are enormous in size. The largest of these blocks measure 25.6 feet long, 17 feet wide, and 3.5 feet thick, and weighs 131 metric tons. Because of their enormity, the way that they were carried to Pumupunku has also been a source of discussion since the temple's discovery. According to chemical research, the red sandstone stones were hauled up a steep slope from a quarry about 10 kilometers near the distant Lake Titicaca. The smaller andesite blocks used for stone face and sculptures were sourced from quarries on the Copacabana Peninsula, roughly 90 kilometers across Lake Titicaca. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or the centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Time for the rare topic. More and more people are talking about the possibility that giants might have once existed along regular humans. This discovery will give you nightmares. Ancient texts such as Homer's Iliad and the Odyssey mention the presence of giants in a way that's almost casual, and many other cultures have similar stories. And now the bodies are being found, and the government and scientists can't hide it any longer. Giant skeletons are being uncovered all over the place, and authorities are in a panic. But what's the real story? Is this a hoax? Or are there really giants out there somewhere? Remember to comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. And now to the next topic. Number 19. How Southliani Hypogeum. The Hypogeum of Hau Safliani is a Neolithic underground building near Paola, Malta, belonging to the Safliani era from about 3300 to 3000 BC of Maltese archaeology. It's often known as the Hypogeum, which literally means underground in Greek. The Hypogeum is considered to have been a sanctuary and necropolis, with the remains of over 7,000 people documented by archaeologists, and is one of the finest surviving instances of Maltese temple building culture which also created the megalithic temples and the Zagra stone circle. Workers excavating cisterns for the new housing complex accidentally crashed through the ceiling of the Hypogeum in 1902. The workmen first attempted to conceal the shrine, but it was finally discovered. Manuel Magri, who oversaw the excavations on behalf of the museum's committee beginning in November 1903, was the first to perform a study of the edifice. A portion of the Hypogeum's contents, including grave goods and human bones, were emptied and thrown away during the excavations without being properly recorded. To make matters worse, Magri died in 1907 while serving as a missionary in Tunisia, and his report on the Hypogeum was lost. 
The temple construction directs light from the surface into the lower rooms, with elaborate designs painted with red ochre on areas of the ceiling, followed by motifs of spots, spirals, and honeycombs. One of the main rooms, dubbed the Holy of Holies, appears to have been designated so that light from the winter solstice lit its facade from the original aperture above. Number 18. Mysterious Crop Circle Pops Up in France Crop circles, often known as crop formations, are not new to the planet. They've been around for decades in the United States and Europe. Colin Andrews coined the word flattening to describe the strange occurrence of patterns formed by flattening a vast area of crops in the 1980s. Many people have linked the occurrence to extraterrestrials throughout the year. Those who feel they are hoaxes, on the other hand, are not convinced. M. Night Shyamalan's 2002 film Signs, which depicted a family living in the U.S. suburbs, waking up to see gigantic patterns on their cornfield, popularized crop circles. However, the belief that crop circles are hoaxes has likely taken a backseat after a large pattern formed within a wheat field in France. A massive Templar crop circle formed out of nowhere in a farmer's field in northern France, causing hundreds of tourists to be terrified and curious. According to accounts, the massive Templar symbol emerged on July 5th in a field near Lens and Vimy. Gerard Benoit, the landowner, spotted the pattern while operating his tractor on July 5th. The Benoit family had posted photographs of the circles on social media. They had to remove them, however, because hundreds of visitors had been visiting their farm. Number 17. A Tall Hoyuk a tall Hoyuk was found in 1958 by British archaeologist James Mellart, who came upon some cave murals that had been uncovered thanks to weathering. Excavations resumed three years later, in 1961, and continued until 1965. A recent finding has shown that Mellart's discovery of the paintings was apparently fabricated. Mellart's old student, Ian Hodder, took over the dig in 1993, together with an international team of experts. Since then, the objects recovered have not only been spectacular, but also genuine. The architecture of the city was distinct from that of other Neolithic towns uncovered in Europe and Asia. There were no streets in Atoll Hoya. The houses were constructed in the style of the Puebloan tribes of the southwestern United States. They were comprised of mud bricks, and people walked from rooftop to rooftop, entering dwellings through a hole in the ceiling using ladders. According to the official website of the Atoll Hoyuk, inhabitants painted the walls white plaster and covered them with murals of animals, hunting scenes, and geometric motifs. Bull horns and skulls, as well as red ochre paintings of the animal, were employed in the house decor. Number 16. Stonehenge, England. One of the great mysteries surrounding Stonehenge is its construction. The ditch and bank would have been excavated with antler picks around six feet deep and stacked together to form a six foot high bank. The dazzling white fresh chalk would have contrasted sharply against the surrounding grassland at the time of the creation. The first stones, the blue stones, weighing roughly four tons apiece, were procured from the Priscilla Hills in North Pembrokeshire, Wales, some 200 miles distant, the only area in the UK where such stone occurs. There's a lot of archaeological controversy about how the stones arrived from Wales to Salisbury Plain. Some researchers believe that these stones were mined in Wales and then carried mostly by water, followed by log roller systems over the land to the site of the Stonehenge. However, no one's ever successfully recreated this feat with the technology available at the time. There was no evidence to support this along the road. The other main, and maybe more likely, idea holds that the stones were naturally carried to Stonehenge by glaciers during the Ice Age. Number 15. Crystal Caves, Mexico Gypsum is the principal element in plasterboard and is used widely in the production of pale ale. This mineral has been used by humans for literally thousands of years. However, towards the start of the 21st century, miners uncovered some exceptionally large crystals that were essentially huge gypsum pillars, which rekindled the world's interest for the substance. They're buried 984 feet beneath Chihuahua, Mexico's Sierra de Naisa mountain. The crystals, which were anchored to the walls and floor of a hot cave, grew for at least half a million years. Many are large enough to walk over and resemble Superman's Fortress of Solitude. But don't bother packing your bags yet. It's now very difficult to visit these crystalline treasures. That may be a good thing. For all of its beauty, the giant crystal cave is a total death trap. 
Giant Crystal Cave quickly became evidently a hostile environment. The air temperature reached 113 degrees Fahrenheit, while the humidity level was close to 100%. The atmosphere was so humid that lingering visitors risked having fluids condensed within their lungs. That can be deadly. Number 14. Voynich Manuscript the Voynich Manuscript is an illustrated codex written in the mysterious Voynichinese writing style. The vellum on which it's been written has been carbon dated to the early 15th century, and stylistic studies indicate that it was composed during the Italian Renaissance. The origins, authorship, and purpose of the documents are all being called into doubt. Several hypotheses have been offered including that it's an otherwise unrecorded script for a natural or manufactured language, an unread code, cipher, or other sort of encryption, or simply a stupid hoax. The manuscript is around 240 pages, with hints that additional pages are missing. Some pages are constructed from foldable sheets of varying sizes. The majority of the pages are filled with fanciful drawings or schematics, some of which are badly discolored, with sections of the manuscript representing people, fictitious vegetation, astrological symbols, and so on. The manuscript is named after Wilfred Voynich, a Polish book trader who purchased it in 1912. Since 1969, it's been stored in Yale University's Beneke Rare Book and Manuscript Library. Many professional and amateur cryptographers have investigated the Voynich manuscript, including American and British codebreakers from both world wars. The manuscript was never decrypted, and none of the several possibilities proposed over the last century have been scientifically confirmed. The mysteries surrounding its meaning and origin have captivated the public's attention, stimulating investigation and debate. Number 13. The Rongorongo glyphs are just as mysterious as where they were found, Easter Island. Rongorongo is a system of glyphs found on Easter Island in the 19th century that looks to be writing or proto-writing. Several attempts at decipherment have been attempted, however none have been successful. Although some calendrical and maybe genealogical information has been uncovered, none of these glyphs can be read. If Rongorongo is shown to be writing and an independent invention, it'll be one of the very few independent writing innovations in human history. Two dozen wooden artifacts with Rongorongo inscriptions were acquired in the late 19th century and are currently spread in museums and private collections. There are no survivors on Easter Island. The items are largely tablets made of random pieces of wood, often driftwood, but they also contain a chieftain's staff, a birdman figure, and two Ray Muro decorations. There are a few petrol glyphs as well, which may include brief Rongo Rongo inscriptions. According to oral tradition, only a select elite was literate, and the tablets were precious. There are several speculative interpretations and purported translation of Rongo Rongo, as with other undeciphered letters. However, with the exception of a piece of one tablet that's been proven to be related to a lunar Rapa Nui calendar, none of the writings are understood. Number 12. Kubera Cave Voronya Cave, or the Cave of the Raven in Russian, is the deepest chasm on Earth and regarded as the Mount Everest of caves. Italian spaleologists Matteo Rivadosi and Guacalmo Rossetti were the first to reach its depths, with the help of the Zazerclay expedition. This made for an excellent team, and the adventure lasted nearly three days, posing challenges while traversing a torturous trail entirely immersed in water. A recent scientific mission discovered an animal that lives in the lowest section, nearly 1,980 meters below the surface. Plutomerus otobologanesis is an anthropod belonging to the Colimboli order. It's a kind of bug that feeds on fungus and decaying debris. Exploration of this cave is a true voyage to the depths of the Earth, a subterranean wonder capable of revealing the secrets and beauty of last unexplored places. Arabica was visited by French speleologist Edouard Alfred Martel, who wrote many publications about the massif around the turn of the 20th century. In 1909 to 1910, Russian car scientist Alexander Kruber, the study's originator in Russia, conducted extensive field research in Arabica. He documented his findings in a number of Arabica-specific papers, as well as multiple books. Number 11. Newgrange. 
Newgrange is an ancient monument in Ireland's County Meath, located on a hill overlooking the River Boyne, eight kilometers west of Drogadia. It's a magnificent Neolithic passage tomb, created circa 3200 BC, making it older than Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids. It's perfectly aligned with the winter solstice dawn. The principal monument in the complex, which also contains the passage tombs of North and Dwarf, as well as numerous henges, burial mounds, and standing stones, is Newgrange. The structure of Newgrange is a massive circular mound with an inner stone tunnel and cruciform chamber. Human bones, both burned and unburned, as well as possible grave items or votive offerings were discovered in this room. The mound is surrounded by carved curbstones and has a retaining wall in front composed largely of white quartz cobblestones. Many of Newgrange's bigger stones are covered in megalithic art. A stone circle also surrounds the mound. Some of the materials used to construct the monument came from as far away as the Mourns and the Wicklow Mountains. There's no consensus on the function of Newgrange. However, it's said to have religious significance. On the winter solstice, the rising sun beams through a roof box above the entrance and floods the interior room. Number 10. Chase Vault. Christ Church Parish is located on the islands of Barbados. It looks like any other church, replete with a peaceful graveyard where many of the island's residents are laid to rest. However, not all of its inhabitants are at peace. One tomb, known as the Chase Vault, is anything but. The Chase Vault has been at the core of one of the most unsettling and sinister mysteries on the island. The vault itself is magnificent, with carved stone and coral walls more than two feet thick. The tomb is sealed with a huge blue marble slab at the entrance. Three coffins were put in the tomb, according to a myth that circulated in the early 19th century. After a few years, the tomb was unsealed in order to install a fresh coffin or body. People were astonished to see that the remaining three coffins had shifted locations. Even though the entrance to the tomb was firmly sealed, and it required seven men to unlock the door, this has spurred debate regarding how the containers were able to move on their own. According to some tales, the people in the caskets were vampires who resurrected from the dead. At the same time, others think that a robber has entered the tomb. Strangely, no indication of anybody ever entering the tomb was ever discovered. Number 9. The Book of Soiga, a manuscript about magic of unknown origin. The Book of Soiga, also known as Aldoraya, is a 16th century Latin treaty on magic possessed by the Elizabethan scholar John Dee. The work was presumed lost after Dee's death until 1994 when Dee researcher Deborah Harkness discovered two copies in the British Library and the Boldelayan Library, with the title Aldolaria Sive Soya Vicor. One version is also referred to as the Traditus Astrological Magicus, albeit the differences between the two are minor. According to Elias Ashmole, the Duke of Lauderdale had a book named Alduriara Sive Soiga Vocor that had formerly belonged to Dee. The book has 197 pages. The manuscript's final 18 pages feature 36 letter tables. The book has 36 big squares of letters that Dee was unable to read, among the incantations and directions on magic, astrology, demonology, tables of conjunctions, lunar mansions, and names and lineages of angels. Previously undiscovered medieval magic treaties are also quoted. Number 8. The Tomb of Tutankhamun Curse Howard Carter's team uncovered Tutankhamun's tomb in 1923, ushering in the modern era of Egyptology. Following the deaths of a few members of Carter's crew and other notable visitors to the tomb, many people began to believe in a curse. Carter began working with prominent Egyptologist James Henry Breston immediately after the tomb was discovered. He recalled how Carter sent out a courier to his house on an assignment. When the messenger approached his residence, he thought he heard a faint, almost human wail. He observed a snake, the Egyptian monarch symbol, in his birdcage as he neared the door. Carter's canary died in its mouth, raising local fears of a curse. The first to die was Lord Carnivon, who sponsored the excavation. He'd been bitten by a bug and had sliced the bug bite accidentally while shaving. When the blood got infected, it caused blood poisoning. Benito Mussolini, who had earlier received an Egyptian mummy as a gift, promptly ordered that it be removed from the Palazzo Chigi. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of Sherlock Holmes, theorized that Lord Carnarvon's death was caused by elementals, generated by Tutankhamun's priests to preserve the royal tomb, which heightened media interest even more. Number 7. The Tomb of King Midas 
In Greek mythology, there's a ruler who has the power to convert anything into gold with a single touch. The king is claimed to have obtained such a power after praying with the gods. Unfortunately, in his quest for greatness, he mistakenly converted his beloved daughter into gold. This narrative is frequently regarded as fictitious. But in truth, King Midas existed in history. In 1957, a tomb dating back 3,000 years was discovered in Turkey. It was dubbed the Tomb of King Midas by the excavation crew. However, the tomb dates from 740 BC, making it too ancient to be Midas's tomb, and it's now widely assumed to be the burial of Midas's father. In 1957, archaeologists unearthed a strange mound in Gordian, Turkey. They discovered a wooden building with a royally clothed body inside, surrounded by the remains of a feast. Number 6. Krishna's Butterball – Ancient Aliens in India Krishna's Butterball is a large granite boulder that stands on a modest incline in Mamalapram, a historical coastal town near the Tamil Nadu, India. It's a popular tourist attraction since it's a part of the group of structures at Mamalapuram, a UNESCO World Heritage Site built as Hindu holy structures by the Pallava dynasty in the 7th and 8th century CE. It's been recognized as a protected national monument by the Archaeological Survey of India. Lord Krishna is reported to have stolen butter from his mother's butter handy on multiple occasions. which might explain the name of the boulder. In 1969, a tour guide named it Krishna's Butterball after Indra Gandhi, who was on a city tour at the time. The Pavala monarch Nara Sinhavarman, who reigned from 630 to 668 CE, attempted but failed to raise the boulder. The balance of this enormous stone boulder was inspired by the Indian Tamil emperor Raja Raja Chola, who was in charge 985 to 1014 CE, who developed Tanjavar Bomai, or never falling mud dolls, with a half spherical base that always returned to their original position when pushed. Due to safety concerns, the city's then governor, Arthur Havelock, attempted but failed to lift the boulder using seven elephants in 1908. Number five, mysterious purple spheres found in desert. Geraldine Vargas of Tuscan and her husband noticed the unusual ball during a stroll one Sunday. We were taking pictures in the neighborhood and it was just like glittering in the sun. We did email a friend of ours who's a zoologist, but she didn't know what it was, Geraldine told reporters. I mean, she didn't seem to recognize what it was. The spheres were inspected by a news station who described them as gooey marbles that ooze out a water substance when squished. Darlene Burrow, Tuscan Botanical Gardens Director of Marketing, stated that after contact with a botanist, he found that if the spheres are naturally occurring, they may be slime mold or jelly fungus. Others believe they're deco beads, which are little colored water-filled balls used to keep plants watered. However, this explains little about why hundreds of them were dumped in the desert. Number four, the mystery of the Paraka skulls. The Paracas skulls are a vast collection of elongated archaic skulls unearthed on Peru's south coast. The find was discovered by Julio Teo, a Peruvian archaeologist in 1928, when he unearthed more than 300 elongated skulls from the Paracas Desert Peninsula. While elongated skulls are not uncommon, the Paracas skulls are especially intriguing for three reasons. They're the biggest elongated human skulls ever discovered, they contain enigmatic, undiscovered DNA, and they're structurally distinct from previous elongated human skulls discovered. Artificial cranial deformation, also known as head binding or head flattening, is an old procedure that involves manually deforming an infant's head to achieve an elongated shape. This is performed by repeatedly putting the child's head between two pieces of wood. Why would someone do anything like this? The extended head form is said to have been connected with spiritual or social prestige in ancient times, making it a desirable characteristic. There's ample evidence that certain societies engage in this activity, and some still do today. However, the structure and genetic makeup of the Paraka skulls distinguish it from those found in other societies. DNA studies reveal that the skulls possess a previously unknown genetic abnormality. Is it feasible that the skulls became longer as a result of this mutation? Perhaps the same genetic mutation caused the Paracas people's hair color to change as well. Some of the recovered Paraka skulls have red or blonde hair, which has no other explanation than genetics. Number three. Discovery of Dragon Man Skull in China Scientists have unearthed a massive fossilized skull that's been concealed in a well in China for 90 years, and it's forcing them to reconsider human evolution. According to academics, the skull was discovered in 1933 by Chinese workmen building a bridge in Harbin, a northern Chinese city, under Japanese rule. 
The skull was wrapped and stored in an abandoned well to keep it from coming into Japanese hands. It was only recently that the old guy who initially concealed it informed his grandson about it just before his death. Chinese researchers have named the extraordinarily well-preserved fossil Homo longi, a new human species. The species has been called Dragon Man after the northern Chinese providence where the skull was discovered, Heilongjiang, or the Black Dragon River area in English. One of the most striking features of the Harbin cranium is its huge size, which at 9 inches long and more than 6 inches broad dwarfs the current human skull. In addition, the skull has a cranial capacity of around 1,420 millimeters. That falls within the range of normal human cranial capacity, but the skull also has several primitive characteristics that make it a unique connection between modern people and Neanderthals. The face features enormous square eye sockets behind the strong bridge row, although it's delicate despite its bulk. Number 2. Unknown Man E, the most mysterious mummy in the world. Gaston Maspero, chief of the Egyptian Antiquities Service, began unwrapping the mummies of kings and queens discovered in a royal burial site at Deir el-Bahari. Maspero discovered mummies wrapped in a sheepskin, including young guy, wrists and feet tied, with linen strips with a simple, undecorated coffin that provided no clues as to the identity. The man had not been mummified in the conventional way. There was much speculation about who the mystery man in a royal stash could be. One idea holds that the Hittite prince brought the Egyptian to marry Tutankhamun's widow, but was assassinated on the Egyptian border, and that unknown man E is that prince, who was buried in a sheepskin as a foreigner. Another possibility is that unknown man E was a significant Egyptian person who died overseas without access to mummification technology. Local priests did everything they could to preserve the body before shipping it home. The most dramatic theory, by far, is that the mysterious person was Prince Pentaware, Ramses III's son, and he was implicated in a conspiracy against his father. The conspirators were apprehended and either executed or permitted to commit suicide, including Queen Tai and Pentaware. While circumstantial evidence leads some credence to this argument, there's still no convincing proof for the assumption, nor is it very realistic to expect a condemned regicide to be entombed amid rulers. Number 1. The Tomb of Emperor Qin Shi Huang In 1974, four farmers working in the Lingtong County, Xi'an, China, accidentally found one of the greatest archaeological discoveries of all time. In three ditches were buried a gigantic army made up of 8,000 individual clay pieces. Horses, chariots, and various army levels were all portrayed, each in its own unique way. This was part of Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum complex. the first Qin emperor who ruled China in the 3rd century BC. All of the warriors were there to protect the mighty emperor from his afterlife enemies. And you'd think that showing there with 8,000 troops would be a little intimidating. Anyway, the entire region was cursed to guarantee that no one screwed things up on Earth, and many farmers in the area believe that the archaeological work done there has unleashed some bad juju. Although it looks like the Chinese Communist Party government, which bulldozed all farmers' homes and stole their land to construct a tourist attraction, has been the worst of all. Would you still want to become a scientist with all these scary discoveries? What kinds of strange humans existed in the past? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!